Hi everyone, welcome to Jenny on a Jenny Talk Show, a show where we discuss matters on social issues that affect each and every one of us, cutting across the socio-economic status. This is where we discuss matters, very sensitive matters that are never discussed on the open. Many people prefer to discuss them on closed doors. Our today's topic is on infertility in women. And my guest, I'm so happy that she's here, very bored, and today to discuss this topic and to give a story. Karibu sana, uh, introduce yourself to my viewers, and then I pick it from there. Hi everyone, my name is Lydia, and I am a wealth manager, but on top of that, I am very passionate about infertility, and I'm glad to be here. Okay, Lydia. Karibu sana to Jenny on a Jenny talk show and let's explore this topic that uh, people shy away from. Uh, take us to your journey of infertility. How did you, how did you discover? Um, just give us a little bit about your growing up and all that. Okay, so I was brought up by an amazing mother, yes. a single mother, mm -hmm. um, and together with my grandparents. Mm -hmm. So I had family surrounded me, went to primary school, mm -hmm. high school, mm -hmm. campus. And so after that, I was like, now we can conquer the thing called marriage. Yes. The thing called marriage. Yes. So um, got met my husband, got married. Um, we got married in 2010. Okay. And so my plan, mm -hmm. as is most people have a plan when you get married. Yes, yeah, sure. My plan was to get children early, so that by the time I'm 40, uh -huh. These yeah, children are done. Uh, done with me, I can start life, yeah. you know? So my plan was that by the time I'm 40, the last one is in kindergarten. As Whoa. in, we are finishing yeah. the story, faster, no faster. diapers, nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So after six months of being married, I was like, something doesn't feel right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm very, I'm a go-getter. Yes. I'm that person who, if it's not right, we fix it. Yes. Um, so I went and I saw my guy now. Mm -hmm. And my gyna is like, ah, you're a bit in a hurry, yeah. but okay, let's, let me give you something to aid there, um, perhaps the conception, mm -hmm. then if it doesn't work, mm -hmm. then now we'll do further tests. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, makes sense. So starts my infertility mm -hmm. pills okay. um, and some... Yeah, just fertility pills mm -hmm. and then su supplements okay. for supporting a pregnancy. So we do this cycle mm -hmm. for we do about five, six cycles mm -hmm. with the drugs. Okay. At that time, he's already at some point he was like maybe biology is a problem, <laughs> so we're taught you know yeah. this is fatal day. Yeah. This is when you ovulate. Uh -huh. No, all these things. Yeah. Because it was like maybe uh -huh. the education is not the pro is yeah. the problem. So finally, he's like, okay, um, let me take you for a test. Mm -hmm. A few tests, we see what's wrong. Okay. So in that journey, they mm -hmm. found out I have polycystic ovarian okay. syndrome. But then he was like, your syndrome mm -hmm. signs are so in the spectrum of things. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't be letting you from getting pregnant. What? So, so before you, mm -hmm. Nini, uh, uh, Nini, expound on that condition. So polycystic ovarian syndrome is a cause is that your ovaries produce eggs, yes, but the eggs don't mature. Okay. So they stay on oh. your ovary mm -hmm. and therefore keep your ovaries at, at after some point now your ovary stops getting the signal that you should produce mm -hmm. an egg because this all these other eggs never matured. Okay. So they're already there. Mm -hmm. But usually for most doctors mm -hmm. they give you a pill. Mm -hmm that matures the eggs and that's that. Oh. So, yes, you will have weight gain. Mm -hmm. One of the symptoms is a lot of weight gain. Mm -hmm. And you see women with a beard. Yeah, like this one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a beard. Yeah. Um, losing hair, your hair starts shedding off. Uh -huh. So for me, I didn't have any of those symptoms. Mm. The only thing I couldn't do was get pregnant. Um, mm -hmm. So he's like, on the spectrum of things, mm -hmm. No, and so and then there's a combination of hormones. They a ratio. Mm -hmm. If that ratio is off, then he'll be like, okay, let's change the ratio. But you're fine. Okay. So we did that, mm -hmm. 
and he's like, I can't figure this out. What? And I like him for that yeah, because he's like he was very honest. Yeah, I can't figure yeah. out basically mm-hmm. what you have mm-hmm. and what we have done medically yeah. should be able to get you pregnant. pregnant yeah. You're not pregnant. I don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. So he referred me to a sec- another doctor. Mm-hmm. You should call it the and blue letter of death. <laughs> because that's where the, all my problems began. Mm-hmm. But you know, so he gives me this blue letter, tells me, then we go to a, a more senior doctor than me. So he referred me to a reproductive or infertility doctor. Okay. Now, whose main aim mm-hmm. is the people who cannot have children. Okay. So you refer to him when yeah. things are really bad. So at that point, mm-hmm. I go see the person he has referred me to, and the person tells me, you're too young. Come on, Lydia. After now, all this, all this, yes. now you are, you are too young. At what age did they, 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 they do? do I mean, I, I, all I want is help. Yeah. And all I want is a child. Yeah. I, 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 I don't care about my age. Because we have a plan, mm-hmm. and this plan must come to pass. Mm-hmm. It doesn't need to. Age has nothing to do with this plan. Yeah, this plan mm-hmm. has to happen. So he tells me you're too young. Um, come back when you're 33. At that time, I was 30 years old. Mm-hmm. I'm like, Mister, 33. You're crazy. Yeah. By 33, me, I should be a baby, last baby. Mm-hmm. You, you're not working with me. <laughs> So I look for another doctor and find another doctor. Uh-huh. I go, I take the same referral letter to now that other doctor. And I say, Now you leave this one alone. Yes, for wait for so it's until you're 33. I go and look for another one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, doctors in Nairobi can frustrate you. Mm-hmm. So I pick this letter, mm-hmm. I take it to now this other guy. Because I have done my research, yeah. I know who he mm-hmm. is. Oh, okay. You see, the goodness of having friends mm-hmm. is that you will ask questions they never sometimes suspected than asking for yourself mm-hmm. so i asked who had the infertility clinic at kinesa hospital so i was told who it is so mm-hmm. i looked for him found his contacts book an, booked an appointment mm-hmm. at his private clinic because i was like i'm not going to care at kenyatta yeah i have to go to work found him mm-hmm. and went to see him and took him the letter so he asked me eh, and what did this doctor say i said he said i wait until i'm 33 and me, I'm not waiting till I'm 33. So, what, what do you need me to do? Mm-hmm. I'm just what you need. Mm-hmm. What would have happened now that you are 33 years that could not happen when you are 30 years? Because to him, mm-hmm. I was in a hurry. I'm really? I'm in a hurry. I'm not letting nature take its course. I'm oh, not. Yes. I'm in a hurry. Okay. Well, mm-hmm. for some of us who are in a hurry, yeah. Let's go find another solution. <laughs> yeah. So um, after that, so we started um, the journey. So mm-hmm. I went for a hormonal profile. Mm-hmm. He went to have his palm checked, mm-hmm. so that at least we have a basic yeah. understanding of what's going on. Yeah. And the doctor was like, "Let's find out even if I mean, let's just start with the basics of do you have do you have eggs? Yeah. Do you have sperm? Yes." Do you, does the sperm work? Mm-hmm. You're not shooting blanks. Yeah. Um, I use some of blood tech. Yes. The, mm-hmm. It doesn't work the way it's meant to work. Yeah. Um, is your uterus fine? Yeah, are your tubes open? So I went for something called HSG. Mm-hmm. For those who mm-hmm. are listening, who have gone for that test, mm-hmm. my sisters, mm-hmm. we are okay. We survived. It shall be well. It shall be well. Yeah. So this, in this test, they literally give you a pain injection before they do it. Mm-hmm. For some people it didn't work. Yeah. For me it worked, so at least I didn't feel that much pain. Yeah. But then they force water through your uterus, through your mm-hmm. tubes. Mm-hmm. It's a dye that yeah. they force through, so that they make sure that the tubes are open. It is a very uncomfortable process. Yeah. I think science needs to develop us. Um, better way. Yes. Yeah. So we did that, mm-hmm. we checked the uterus was fine, mm-hmm. the lining was okay. So it was like, what's a problem? What's the problem? Yeah. So, um, so first one we he changed the medicines mm-hmm. we were taking mm-hmm. and doubled the dose. Mm-hmm. Now, that is when I usually say problems began because you get the most crazy headaches. Your emotions are everywhere. You're you're crying. I mean, you see someone passing by and just and looks cry. at you at a weird way and you cry. 
as in because your you hormones, are thrown off balance your completely. hormones are everywhere mm-hmm. so we did that mm-hmm. without tracking so what is tracking tracking is that you go for a scan mm-hmm. every two days to confirm that your eggs are growing two days every two days for how long for 12 days so so out of the 12 days six days you you and that guy had friends because he has to come of in. course yes and it is not the best scan in the world and uh, because they don't do the scan do for pregnancy sure. that you people know that is yeah. on top of your abdomen no they do it through your uh. vagina so <laughs> it is not like the greatest scan in the world uh, yeah. but so we did it without tracking <laughs> and he was like okay the next cycle we do it with tracking so we did the next cycle with tracking so we realized my eggs can grow mm-hmm. um so he says maybe the problem is the combination of drugs so mm-hmm. we started now the third cycle with injectables so that means i inject a hormone every day into my body on my tummy so that's 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 quite a journey you know? yes yeah. yes So if you've never injected yourself or you fear needles me yeah, yeah, you yeah. become very comfortable with needles me yeah, I can just imagine because <laughs> and then even the sight of it and then yeah. it affects everything so it affects your social life because mm-hmm. you have to inject at a certain hour every day so if it is 8 pm, 8 PM. whether you're in a restaurant whether you're at a party in wherever you are you have to be in a place where there's a safe place you can inject yourself through the injection and move on. There is no numbing cream. You just inject yourself. Inject yourself and move on. And you inject yourself either on your thigh or on, on your tummy. Huh? On your thigh or tummy. So, you inject yourself. So, we did that for 12 days. <laughs> and then he gave me the injection. Let me say something the mm-hmm. day before because <laughs> The people did they are very judgmental. Please never for me never judge a person before you know their story. It's very wrong. It's I, I don't know how I can put it. Because the ladies here giving a story and maybe there could be a person out there who are judging you mm. thinking that you want to maintain your figure age. Mm. May God forgive them. Let's continue. So now after that mm-hmm. the cycle failed. Yeah. And he was like let's change the protocol of the drugs again. Yeah. Um maybe it's us who are not getting it right. Mm-hmm. So cycle number 4 started. Yeah. Um which is now injecting myself twice a day. Now not even once. No, it was twice, once in the morning, once in the evening. Same then, time again. Same time and then now we did tracking but now every four days instead of every two days. Two now days, we yeah. are doing it every four days. Finished. And then he gave me the drug for inducing ovulation. Mm-hmm. That's that drug. And then again he was like, let's try naturally. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. So you have something called time sex. Mm-hmm. So it tells you will have you have to have sex between this time and this, and this time. time. Yes. So whether your husband if your husband has traveled here better be tell me that day. Or <laughs> because you you're traveling like, with him. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because it has to happen at that time. Yeah. It is a very frustrating I it, just it removes the joy out of that it's part true. of your relationship because yeah. then you are like it's so yeah. scientific. It, it's medicine. Yes, it's medicine. Yeah. Literally, it's mm-hmm. very scientific. Yeah. So that didn't work as well. Mm-hmm. So the, this time he said we still do the same medicine, mm-hmm. but what he'll do now is that he will do IUI. So he'll clean the sperm and mm-hmm. then now put it back. Yeah. On the day of ovulation. So you can imagine how that. Yeah, can just imagine. Yeah. yeah. The process went through again. Yeah. And it didn't work. So at that point, mm-hmm. for me, I calculated the amount of money we have used. Mm-hmm. Because you see insurance doesn't pay for any of these things. Um so you're buying the drugs on your own. The drugs themselves are anything between forty thousand to about eighty thousand. Then add the doctor's fees, the the scanning, the scanning everything else. So it's like let's take a break. We'll look for yet another doctor. Yeah. Um because he could not tell us what was going wrong. Yeah. We'll look for another doctor. Let's just take a break. Yeah. Save. Gather money back together yeah, and we'll go back to the story. Mm-hmm. 
at that time, I also started having very many health challenges because mm -hmm. I think the hormones yeah, exactly. had reached my end with, mm -hmm. that, with them. Mm -hmm. So we took a break for about a year. Mm -hmm. Then we found another doctor. Mm -hmm. We now moved to Aga Khan to a doctor had been recommended for in Aga Khan. Um, let me the, put one, it. the one now for 33 years is still waiting. The one for 33 years is still waiting. <laughs> oh. And by then we are still now getting closer <laughs> to this 33. Anyway. Okay. Um, I, at this point, uh -huh. I have to say this. I know it is well meaning. Mm -hmm. I know people mean well. Mm -hmm. But sending me the doctor who you think has the magic cure does not help me. It does not help me yeah. because that doctor might have a magic cure for someone, someone else. else. Not Lydia. It's true. It's not true. Please, Lydia, really yes. speak to someone. So okay. you sending your friends, um, doctors, herbalists, suggestions of herbs that people need to take, does not help because you don't know what her condition is yeah. and you don't know what she's searching for. You don't even know the, st the status of her and her husband. It's the true. husband might be the one with the problem. Mm. But you've sent her to 20 million doctors and herbalists to fix a problem that truly is not her problem. It's true. So let them, let them, allow them to give you, to allow you into their journey, mm -hmm. but without ideas, without judgment, just be the safe space that she can come and cry and go home. Mm. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Can they keep your keep your, keep your advices unless they are so they are Yeah, if I ask for, you, please just don't advise. Yeah, just please. be my friend. Yeah, that's that's what I need you to be. Yeah, my doctor is being my doctor. Yeah. So you, you need to be my friend. Um, take me to hospital when mm -hmm. I need to go for injections in the morning. Yeah. Come and tell me. Can I take you to hospital? Are you having injections today? Mm -hmm. Let me take you to hospital. Yeah. You'll have done me a whole lot of favor. Mm. Already, we are not allowed to drink coffee, so we are miserable. We're not allowed. We are, it's minimal amount of coffee and tea. Us, there's no coffee. Then tea, mm -hmm. he's minimized it. So really, I'm a Kenyan. I like tea. Yeah. <laughs> I like coffee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So already, I'm miserable. My uh, diet has changed quite yeah. a bit. Um, if I go for a function, mm -hmm. I have to do my functions round. For this forty, for this thirteen days, mm -hmm. all the functions I go for are around that whole injection, oh, seeing the doctor so type amazing. of. So I can't even do a trip. I can't go on a holiday until we finish with the doctor on day fifteen yeah. or sixteen so when I finish with the doctor. Is saying you've become unsocial. Sure. You don't you come have for function. Already my stomach is sore, so I'm also avoiding many you know plants yeah. because I inject myself. One side today morning, the other side in the evening. After a while, that you you have no more place to be injecting yeah, yourself. True. So you're sore. Yeah. So we go to this other doctor, mm -hmm. and the first thing he says is, you know, for me, I believe conception is um, is supernatural. Okay. It's God who gives children. Mm -hmm. What I will do is I will use what mm -hmm. I know to mm -hmm. help you mm -hmm. to get to that goal. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't happen, don't blame yourself. Don't blame science. Some things God chooses for them not to happen. That's a good doctor. And he's an elderly doctor, mm -hmm. so I think that kind of removed the stigma yeah. of this is my fault, yeah. why is this not working? Um, I love that about him because he was very clear. Yeah. Science can only do so much. Yeah. You as a human being can only do so much, yeah. but conception is supernatural. It's true. Um, so we will help. Mm -hmm. You will do your part. I will do my part. Mm -hmm. However, don't feel guilty or shame mm -hmm. because you don't get a child. Yeah. Which was good because yeah. for me it laid down the basics of we are going to try this. Whether it works or not, mm -hmm. it's now good. And I liked that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, so we went through the first cycle. Mm -hmm. Again, it didn't work. It didn't work. Mm -hmm. This time, we figured out I have a deficiency of vitamin D. Mm -hmm. So, I started getting vitamin D supplements. Mm -hmm. So, the difference between the vitamin D you get from your shop mm -hmm. is that the concentration is very low. Now I start getting what they call medical grade vitamin D, mm -hmm. which is a very high the concentration. concentration is high. Yeah. So that it helps with this ovulation 
issue. Then the second cycle, we we did blood work mm -hmm. during the cycle, so it showed what I produce high, what mm -hmm. I produce low. So mm -hmm. he corrected. Okay. So for me, I'm sure this cycle will work mm -hmm. because we had done everything we can, spent all the money we can. Can to just get this imagine done. for sure. And I remember we went, mm -hmm. we finished the cycle, um, and I remember we were at my cousin's wedding. Mm -hmm. And in the morning, the hospital calls and says the pregnancy test was negative. Oh my goodness. And I'm at a wedding. I'm meant to be screaming, shouting, you know, celebrating my cousin getting married. Yeah. Um, and I remember looking at her and I'm like, wow, this is going to be a long day. Oh this is going to be a, such a long day long, for me. Yeah. But I made it through. Mm -hmm. um, in the evening now is when I collapsed. I just cried. Yeah, the, the reality hit. The yeah. reality hit. Mm -hmm. And then we're not even home because the wedding was out of town. So yeah. We're not home. So I just cried and cried and cried and watched it out. Mm -hmm. um, so we came back to Nairobi. I went to see the doctor on my own. Mm -hmm. Again, he was like, you know, Lydia Conception is divine. Yeah. Um, by that time, my health had 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 tanked, mm -hmm. so it had gone this way. Yeah. So I got asthma. I had asthma when I was a child. It mm -hmm. came back full blown. Mm -hmm. Then now I started getting sick, like really sick. So we had to stop um, for the sake of my health. Yeah. Um, so we went, and um, so for me, I said maybe it's, it may or may not be the hormones yeah. i cannot tell mm -hmm. but for the sake of now me you now yeah let me stop and let me get help okay. in terms of my other health challenges yes. so i i got food allergies mm -hmm. yeah people mm. late onset yeah, of food allergies at 34. yeah oh um goodness. so i got food allergies um so I had to stop for a while. Mm -hmm. And when I stopped and took a break, I was like, you know what? Mm -hmm. This is not life and death. I can't put my life on hold. Yeah. I've chased this dream for what mm -hmm. now? This was the seventh year of me chasing this dream. And it was not working. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> there's only so much I can push of myself yeah. to make this dream work. Mm -hmm. So I was like, let me take a break. And when I'm at 38, 39, yeah, we will we'll reconsider try. this. Try. We will mm. try this again. Yeah. But for now, I'm going to take a break. Yeah. And in all this time, mm -hmm. most people, no one ever, very, people, very few people stopped to ask me, how are you feeling about this? Did they first understand the journey that you've gone I think for me, one, I was not sharing the journey. Yeah. Because so I am those people who are like, yeah. we need to get this done. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you, I would go for my morning injection what? in hospital and I'd be at the bank by 9 a.m. Working. Working. Um, would do the transfer, um, the procedure for you know putting the sperm back yeah. in and everything else. Would do that day in the morning. And would go to work. At 10 a.m. By 11 a.m. I'm on my desk. I never stopped to process what I was going through. Yeah. And I never stopped to allow people in. The only time, once or twice, or actually three times, mm -hmm. I had a breakdown. Everyone just thought, I need it today, it's emotional. Mm -hmm. Because then I would cry, walk out of my desk, go to the loo, wash mm -hmm. my face, and come back, come again. back, and I'm back to normal. Um, at that time, all the people you, you got married together with, they have, children. they have two, three children. I can imagine. You're still, even one has not yeah. appeared, leave alone now two or three, <laughs> one has not uh, appeared. Me, me Lydia, I, can, <laughs> I, can, I can't say Lydia, I understand mm. that, like, I don't. I can just imagine. Yes. And the, the stigma people put on people, yes. and especially when you're married and only one years, Yes. And there's Everyone no is looking at you like suspicious. Yes. <sighs> so people have gotten children. Yeah. People have I mean you're being called for birthdays. Other times you wouldn't be invited because they're of course uh, because they're feeling gosh, will it affect her? Yeah. Now the other thing about sharing your journey that I struggled with mm -hmm. is that if I share my journey with you, mm -hmm. then I get pity. 
I don't get sympathy, I get pity. pity yeah. So everyone is walking around you on eggshells. Do we call her for that baby shower or not? Mm -hmm. Do we call her for the birthday or not? For me, your kids are my kids, as in, I'm fine. Yeah. Yes, there are moments I'll, I'll struggle with going for that baby yeah. shower. But if we're close friends, mm -hmm. I'll be like, Lydia, you'll so deal with the tears tomorrow. Today, yeah, we're going to show up for this baby yeah. shower. Um, so that kind of became a difficult season where mm -hmm. you're, you're alone. Yeah. A lot of it is alone because yeah. you go to hospital. If you're not going with him, you're yeah. on your own. It's true. So you go to hospital, you go mm -hmm. to work. You, there, there's not much in terms of companionship. Like the support system. The support yeah. system. And so after a while, I started mm -hmm. talking about it. Um, on Facebook, yeah. I started talking about it with people around me. Yes. Because I realized you're not understanding what I'm mm -hmm. going through. Yeah. And it's a difficult season. Yeah. So let me start talking about it. Mm -hmm. So I started slowly by slowly. Mm -hmm. I'll talk about it. Talk to this person, talk to this person. Mm -hmm. It's just been a journey, dear. Yes. And uh, please, anybody who is struggling out there, may God comfort you in his own ways. And uh, kindly, me, I, people didn't judge, eh? but that's the nature of people, by the way. But um, be compassionate. And I always say, as you leave your house in the morning, carry these three things with you. Be, carry love, carry kindness, and compassion. And choose to view each and every person through the lens of understanding. Even if you don't understand their situation, just try to put yourself in their shoes. Work with them for five minutes. And then it, you'll understand what the other person is feeling. Yes. Yeah. So it's a lonely journey. Yeah, I know. It's a difficult journey. Yeah. It's financially draining, mm -hmm. emotionally draining, yeah. physically draining. Um, so for each person, for each woman, first, mm -hmm. let me say you're unique. Yeah. You're you, and the solutions I have for me mm -hmm. cannot be copy-pasted. It's true. But what can be copy-pasted mm -hmm. is compassion, is love, mm -hmm. is gentleness. Yeah. Be gentle with the people around you. Yeah. You don't know why she doesn't have that child. Yeah. Don't go and ask her, eh, when you guys are waiting for what? Imagine. Please. It is, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I've had stories. Uh, I have had the unique opportunity of working with different women mm -hmm. going through this journey. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you listen to people's comments that they've had to endure. Yeah. You know, don't go to that so and so's house. She doesn't have children. What? Yeah. You come, children come into my house, does not negate the fact that I don't have children. I, in fact, I think I am a very good auntie because yeah. I struggled. So now I, I kind of appreciate children a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, you hear comments, mm -hmm. um, people who've been kicked out of their marital homes, yeah. and you know, yeah. um, and later on they find out it wasn't even her. It's their fault. Yeah, it's true. It, it was the guy. Yeah. You know, yeah. I've had stories of people who, you know, this guy is married, now we are wife number four and still they are no children. Babies. Yet, these other, all these other women, you as a mother-in-law kicked out, mm -hmm. have babies. That's true. I've actually, I know a case of like that. And then now, surely. Oh, what do you tell people? Yeah, so, I mean, be gentle. Yeah. I think men need to start speaking a lot more. Yeah. Um, the silence will kill them. Yeah. Um, Talk to your fellow men, say, you know, this is what I'm struggling with. Um, because as women, we mm. talk. Jenny, I'll come and tell you, yeah. my heart is relieved, I move on. Yeah. But you've not talked to anyone, you've not told anyone anything. Yeah. Um, so you're, you're going through your own thing, mm -hmm. and the other thing it does is that it puts a strain on your marriage. It does. It's, marriage is twice as difficult. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, it's an institution, by the way. Already, the institution is hard. Uh -huh. Add infertility. Hey, it's, it becomes worse. It is a desert, and unless this, and truthfully, a lot, of, the reasons why a lot of the marriages 
that face infertility either last forever or don't last at mm-hmm. all is truthfully you just at some point do not like it. To blame each other. You're blaming each other, you're annoying each other. other. Like you're the uh, and then there's the financial strain. Mm. So you're thinking this money that this girl is demanding mm-hmm. or this man is demanding, I would be doing this with so it. They wouldn't be investing or yes. whatever. So you, you literally have to just take a pause and say, okay, mm. how is this going? How are you feeling? Yeah. Um, talk about how you're feeling with your partner. Mm-hmm. It might be hard because yeah. I will not lie. There are many times we don't know how we're feeling. It's, it's hour by hour, yeah. <laughs> minute by minute. I'm just imagining, even starting the conversation, you may be pricking a, yes. a balloon or it, yes. you don't know the content. Yes. yes. It's a scary... It's a scary place. Yeah. And I will, I will not lie, a lot of times the women who are going through this are very bitter mm-hmm. and very angry. Yeah. You will not notice the bitterness or the anger until you start interacting with her. Yeah. So if your friend is annoyed all the time, leave, please, she's not annoyed at you. Yeah. She's just annoyed. She's fighting her own battles. At this battle that she's not winning. Yeah. And she's not understanding why she's not winning. And she's using all the means. All the means to win. To win. And she's not winning. So just let her be. Um, I know it's hard because she's your friend and you're wondering why you're always annoyed at all of us. Yeah. Let her be. She's fighting a battle. She's not winning. Mm-hmm. And truthfully, the way we've been brought up in our African society and context, mm-hmm. this thing is a woman's it's a cross. It's it true. is our kiondo to carry. Yeah. And um, a lot of times, mm-hmm. no one stops to ask her what's what's wrong so you're fighting Actually, even if they know even if they yeah. know the problem they don't always blame a woman yes so now you're going through the blame game mm-hmm. with other people you're struggling mm-hmm. you as the person yeah. to just make steps to where you want to this battle that you're trying to mm-hmm. win so cut her some give her leave it. give mm-hmm. her room yeah. <laughs> give her room mm-hmm. That she's not angry at you, she's mm. not bitter at you, mm. she's right now in the middle of... And then she's also angry at herself. Yeah. Because you're wondering, literally, you, you feel out of control. I would not lie, you really feel out of control. Mm. Because the hormones really mess up with mm. your emotion. Mm. I'm not the type to cry. Let me tell you, when you're at a supermarket and all you're doing is crying as yeah. you shop. And then everyone is just looking at you. At you. And at that point, your hormones have told you it is right. for it, to lie. Sasa sisi tunataka to kulia, to lie, and you just cry mm. and cry. Let me tell you, I've cried at Langata roundabout mm. till the cop stopped me and called mm. <laughs> his, oh the, the guy now who heads that unit yeah. on a motorbike because I went around that roundabout six times. What the cop is wondering? This woman has been on this roundabout for six exiting. times. She must be mad. Finally, this woman has lost it. She, he told me, just park the car. Now, Mbagathi went, park the car there. He came, he found me crying. He just told me, Madam, So he sent this other guy, who was such a blessing, because he really encouraged me. And for him, his story was similar to mine. They yeah. had waited for 11 years for a child. Yeah. The child that God blessed them. At 26 weeks, it was a threatened miscarriage. Yes. This child Survived. stayed. Yes, and stayed in an incubator for a very long time. So they sent the right person to encourage yeah, me. Yes, true. God will have angels for you. Yeah. But you can imagine what type of emotional mess I am. I can imagine going round around six us, times, just crying, wailing. So you're out of. You're feeling really out of control. Yeah. I will say that you yeah. you feel out of control. You don't feel in charge of you. Mm-hmm. You don't. So all these emotions mm-hmm. are going through you. So the anger and bitterness is there. Yeah. You're angry at God. God, where am I in this situation? Actually, okay, that is what I wanted to ask you. You're angry at yeah, God because, because let me tell you, you go to the village. There's a 13 year old, 16 year old, 17 year old pregnant. You are thinking. Ah. And then <laughs> you are even ask God. I've, I've, this is the way I've lived. Yes. I can't. I mean, yeah. you, you listen to stories 
you watch news it's babies being done imagine someone had a child and didn't want the child you all you're asking for is that one child yeah um so there's a lot of anger towards god mm-hmm. anger towards people, people. I, you know, just towards everything everything yeah. you're just feeling out of control at what point did you now say enough it's enough i'm not trying again so when i turned 35 yeah i said i'm done no when i turned 34 mm-hmm. i said i'm done um by that time we had been on this journey since I was 29 yeah um actually 28 because i got married on my 28th birthday yeah. so since I was 28 now we are turning 33 we've yeah. turned 33 yeah i was like no. I, my my body was no longer mine there is the weight gain weight loss yeah. the the headaches the what and the food and i mean my body was no longer mine mm-hmm. so i said enough is enough, enough, is enough. Yeah. let me first deal with all these emotions that i have the mm-hmm. feelings of defeat yeah of loss of failure yeah. because you really feel like yeah, a failure definitely. you feel like a failure yeah. so i decided let me take a chill pill let me just gather myself together yeah. um and after that i was like mm-hmm. so i i was at that for i said let me i think i should try it again yeah. I went to see the doctor. The first visit, by the second visit, I was like, I'm not doing yeah, this. Doing I, my, yeah. my mind cannot do this anymore. Yeah. And so that was that. Um, I've not tried again. Yeah. And, and not because of lack of wanting to. Yeah. But truthfully, I'm content. Yeah. And I have accepted that this might not be. This dream may never come to come pass. To pass yeah. and it is okay. Yeah. It doesn't make me less of a woman. Yes. It doesn't make me less of Lydia. It yes. doesn't make me a failure. It doesn't define me. Yeah. Um then define me as a failure or any of those things. Yeah. I'm Lydia. Um and for that woman who is at that point where everyone is pressuring you and yeah, telling please, you please look at the camera. For the woman who is there who is like I can't go back to I am not ready for this. It's fine. don't allow people to pressure you to go back um to do don't allow everyone anyone to pressure you to go back to doing the fertility treatments mm. until you're ready if you're not ready it's fine mm. it's good don't peer pressure is a lot yeah. but don't 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 let them you know your body yeah yeah uh, thank you so much Lydia for coming and telling your story i know this story will encourage somebody out there And for each and every woman out there who is struggling to conceive the battle belongs to God. Let it be. And I pray that Lydia in his own time in his own appointed time God will fulfill your desires. Yes. Thanks so much for coming. Kindly people continue subscribing, sharing the link with your friends. Let us learn together. Share the link with your friends. Let them get to learn. It will encourage somebody. It will, it will really give someone hope. From me and Lydia. Bye.